Welcome to our study of evil. And we're on the 14th study. And if you haven't done 13, all 13, this study you need to get all 13. We're picking back up where we left off last time. <coughs> Excuse me. Where good is evil and evil is good. When sanity has reached a breaking point, and men and women are taught and preached and instructed by other men and women that God says is evil and what God says is good, the word of God, is heard as wrong and old and of no authority. When the medical field has given excuse to sin and medication supplied to right the wrong, when the media covers sin in feign or pretend words of innocence, and downplay the severity of actual sin. And we have a problem. So, and this is the famous expression we're, we're here. Evil is good and good is evil. And it is a doctrine that is found in the Bible. Last time we looked at five points and we're going to look at the last five points on this. So if you take your Bibles to Psalms 109 verse 5. Psalms 109, verse 5. And the Bible says, And they have rewarded me evil for good, and hated for my love. Sometimes the marking of my Bible makes it hard to read my Bible. So, Again, we, we see this principle. We saw it last time. It's the rewarding of something bad for doing something good. And we talked about, you know, giving to the church. We talked about uh, tips for, you know, barbers and, and waitresses and waitresses. So when a Christian, as that is who has studied is for, when he loves someone and the person or people reward evil for good. So one aspect is what you get back from others. He says, for they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. When you as a Christian, you love and you will be called a hater. You will be, you know, you don't love. And you do. And when you're accused of not loving somebody because you present them the gospel, that is love. And when your family rejects you because you want to do correct according to the Bible. And I've even had churches Baptist churches and I've had Christians who hate me because I have followed the principles of what the Bible says and even the Apostle Paul himself has said what have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth and these people who reject you and God because of the truth and because of your love you're trying to show them the way the truth and the light you're trying to correct them of their error, and they in turn give you hatred. That's evil is good and good is evil. A reward. According to Webster's 1828 Dictionary, number one, recompense or corresponding return for good done, for kindness or services delight. Rewards are consist of money, goods, or any return of kindness or happiness. So when we look at this aspect here, it's not just getting money or goods. It's the kindness, happiness, or respect due to you for your love. And Jesus and, and the Apostle John writes to us as far as the world and giving them the gospel, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. 
And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And I've already quoted to you how Paul said to a Christian, have I become your enemy because I've spoken to you in the truth? And rest assured, since I've been saved in 1987, and I have tried to live to the Bible, and I am a sinner, I'm not perfect. I have been mistreated, I have been misrepresented, I have been an outcast, I have been demetered unsafe, I have been by family, by friends, by Christians, by churches. And when the Apostle Paul persecuted the church, Jesus said, why persecutest thou me? Relax, you that are doing correct by the will of God. Because it's not just to you is happening, it's also happening to Jesus. And if it's happened to Jesus and he takes it personally, and he does, you better believe saved or lost, they're going to have to give it an account. As Christians, have we always recompensed the good? Even if the good is not the re reasonable return to all mankind. Well, I'm not going to treat him good because, you know, he, he doesn't like me or he doesn't. That's not the point. So when we have that attitude, we go into that attitude. I'm not going to do because what they're going to treat me. We're being evil ourselves. And we don't know how. We, maybe things will change. Surely the verse is about the saint of God from an ungodly fellow. But how are we treated to the saints and ungodly ourselves? The golden rule does not apply to Christians to render evil for evil and good for good. We are to love the brethren, we are to help the enemy, and we are to reward them as, as good. There are many people out there, in this day and age, I've seen with Christians, and I'm going to poke fun and I'm going to kick it because that's my job. They are highly upset and get upset when you have a Democrat or Republican against their Republican or Democrat. I'm not because he's a Democrat. Well, what if they're a good Democrat? How dare you say that about the Republican? What if he's a bad Republican? <coughs> the rewarding of bad for all the well-doing and we can do this as Christians, as not as coming to us, but how we give to them. Here comes a sinner down the street, and, the, and the God says, I want you to do good for him. I want you to give him a gospel tract. Well, Lord, you know. Well, you're rewarding evil. That's not good. Proverbs 17, verse 3. You know, the Bible says, Proverbs 17, 3. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. There are more evil in the church than good. Oh, 7, 13. How dare you say that about my church? Well, what did God say? The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil first and the good. There are people in church, saved and lost, that have ill-treated people and things and, and places that ought not have been so. As I said, I, I am a born-again, Bible-believing Christian and I have been rejected by Christians who refuse the Bible, who have nothing to do with me. I've got Christians mad at me and all that. And every time I go and friend them on Facebook, 
and then they'll friend me, and then, uh, you know, I say what I do, the things I do, and say the things I say, and then, boom, they're gone again. I don't know. But Proverbs 17, 13, whoso, I guess that's anybody, saved or lost, rewarded, okay, that's the contents of Psalms 109. We looked up that definition in at Webster's Dictionary. <coughs> Excuse me. Evil for good. Evil shall not depart out of his house. Whoso. It is a standard conclusion that the unrighteous, the unsaved, are going to render evil and maybe sometimes some good. Maybe they'll have a little charity. Maybe they're going to, you know, show a little help and a little kindness. And whatever they do, they're going to do it for their own selfish means of why they're doing it. And whatever why they do it is why they do it. And they have no respect and no love for God. But as far as the Christian, you're going to reap what you sow. Galatians 6, 7. And this goes for the lost and for the saved. But let's look at the saved. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. If you're going to reward evil for people who have done good to you, Christian, don't turn around and go boo-hoo, 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 why people are mistreating you. And you need to look at your life on your prayer altar to say, God, have... The treatment of my gain, is it because Psalms 109, I'm doing right? And I become an enemy, like Paul says. Or, Lord, is it Proverbs 17, it's because I have done evil to somebody. It could be either or. Do you want good in your life? Reap the good and sow the blessings. But... Always, it's not always going to be so. Don't think, and don't get the idea in your mind, don't think I'm going to tell you that, oh, if I do good, everybody's going to be good towards me. No, that's Psalms 109. Paul said to a church, to Christians, have I become your enemy? Jesus did good, didn't he? Did he not end up on the cross? But Psalms 109 says we're going to get evil for good. Proverbs 17, 13 says we get evil because we gave evil. And it says house. Whosoever rewards evil for good shall not depart from his house. House. It's not just the individual, but it also affects the home of all the people, place, and things. And we run to the standard conclusion that I, I often preach about is your sin doesn't just affect you. It affects everybody around you. So it's the law of sowing and reaping. And your sin of treating somebody evil has come back evil not as a sin that you've done, but as a consequence. Now, like I said, this is the, the 14th study. you got to get all 13 studies. Evil can be a sin. Evil can be a consequence. Evil can be a consequence and a sin. And we find that when you sin by doing evil to others, the consequences is going to be you're going to get more than what you put in. And others are going to be affected around you. You can affect your home and you can affect your church. It's plain and simple. Isaiah 5.20 Isaiah 520. Woe 
unto them, them, plural, doesn't say who, doesn't say just to Israel, doesn't say just to unsaved people, unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. I always like that for a second, you get the word bittersweet. It's a self-explanatory. There's no further evaluation needed in this verse. We have a present evil generation, people and congregation, lost and saved, and it's going to wax worse and worse. There are people who say, doing something for God according to scriptures, that is wrong, that is terrible. Uh, how vile and wicked you are and how someone in the family will introduce their children and their family to drink of alcohol to sex and drugs and all that evilness that's good i've been amazed over the years and i've heard stories and testimonies that somebody gets saved male or female they honestly generally get saved and they start living their life they become that new creature and it's amazing to find out parents or a spouse has called now to get angry because the evil that person was doing as sins has now been put away and they're doing good now they're reading their Bible. They're going to church. They've got a clean life. And now they're hated because they're living a good life. I mean the good life, a holy and righteous life trying to please God. And they were much loved and much pleased when they were, whether they were drinking, whether they were in, in sex, whether they were in, in sinning or whatever they did wrong. And that's a group of people who are living in sin that love sin and hate righteousness. And now one of their own has now come to hate unrighteousness and hate unholiness and want to do right. And now they become the hated and the wrong. And again, it just circulates around the three verses that we've looked at already. They're going to be wicked people for going to call the good wicked and there's going to be good people who's going to call good people christians wicked and they're christians themselves the last thing the media would want you to know is how to be saved and believe in the lord jesus christ it's a woe and warning of mixing up the values of god isaiah 5 20. Micah 3.2. Micah 3.2. Tabs help your Bible. Even me. And you can get them at the stores. And you can put them in yourself. Takes a little time. Takes a little effort. Do it slow. I mean, I made mistakes. I've actually glued two pages together one time. And that takes time to fix and that bible tabs help oh it's cheating it helps you it helps you micah 3 2 who all right israel and jacob first one but who hate the good and love the evil there are people out there who hate god because he's good. There are people out there who love the devil because he's wicked. It's not bad, is it? There are people out there who hate healthy food. And there are people out there who love junk food. On the present thought of this study, who would you think that this verse is naming or calling out? The godly or the ungodly? The answer is the godly. 
But there will be some ungodly who will answer the statement themselves as ungodly. The wicked ungodly see themselves not doing evil. They are doing fine and well. A man who has not looked into the scriptures, never mind read, he doesn't know what good is. And we get a lot of people come up to the public ministry, and ask, well, I'm good. If you read the scriptures, no, you're not good. And when I, a lot of times with Christians, you know, they'll say, I'm good. I'll, I'll, hey, the Bible says, no, there's nothing to do with good. And I had one day, the other day, well, you know, I can show you the scriptures where I have not sinned. So are you telling me that you're perfect now? Now you're good? I'm not good. Man, I'm not going to be good to the day this body dies or I'm raptured. And even if I'm doing that with good in the Bible, am I doing it for good motives or is there another motive? But it says hate the good and love the evil. They hate and they love. It's a counterwise reaction and good and evil are opposite. But the negative and the positive do not match. Hate should be evil. The Bible says hate sin, hate the evil. And love ought to have to be good. But it's not so with the ungodly. Oh, I just love going to my ball team playing the game. What about going to church? I hate church. Something wrong with that statement? I just love my beer. And you don't see what the beer is doing to you and your stomach and your family? I love it. But it's destroying your family. Uh, who cares about them? Aren't you supposed to love the family? Anybody who has been in, in, a, in any form of public ministry with an average person hates God and Jesus Christ. Everybody loves Jesus. Everybody loves God. You've never publicly witnessed and spoken the Bible, the true aspect of faithfulness. And you have not presented the true aspect of the gospel to an unsaved person or a Christian that has high standards of themselves. Listen, there are Christians out there that hate the good. Because they're not doing good. They're doing the evil and they can be saved. They may be in a church that's doing evil. And you may be in a church that's doing right. Well, your church is wrong because your pastor doesn't support what my pastor teaches. They do love religion when it does not poke into their personal lives and their personal sins. They love science. Science today, 2020, April 3rd, science, find us a cure for coronavirus. But don't you dare bring God and Jesus into the coronavirus and tell them it's a judgment of God against our sins. Don't you dare tell us that. Education. A good Sunday school lesson by a man that loves the Bible and reads the Bible and studies the Bible and wants to do right is great. But an education that will teach you how to do wrong, such as the public school system, and how to introduce sex education and we'll give you free contraceptives. And if, if you have that accident, we'll give you a free abortion. That is not the way of God. God says get married first. Politics. I don't know any politics would be fine with the Bible. And then sports. Well, what I watch, what I do is... It, it, where can you find wrong with it? Why is it done on Sundays? Why is it sometimes 
you will miss a Sunday night or a Sunday morning because that is that sports is doing something or a big event on a Sunday or Sunday night. Well, church is not that important. My game is more important. Of the which a value has no value in the scriptures. Jesus is the good and he was hated. And the world is the evil. And is so loved sadly by many Christians. We are told to come out of the world. We are told not to love the world. And yet many Christians do. I'm going to give you some Bible verses here. And many of you are going to love. Okay, let me look them up. And many of you are going to hate and say, I don't have the time. Why didn't he open it up? Some of you hate me because I have kicked a sin of yours. I have kicked a denomination of yours. I have I have kicked a teaching of yours. I have gone against you by what the scriptures say. And you are calling me evil, wicked, and bad, and God for what the Bible says because you do not approve by your authority. And your authority is evil. And God and his word are good. John 7, 7. John 12, 25. John 15, 18, and 19. John 17, 14. 1 John 3, 13. Exodus 20, verse 5. Psalm 68, verse 1. And Matthew 6, 24. Now the last one we're going to look at. Malachi, last book of the Old Testament, chapter 2, verse 17. There are evil people that call the good things of God evil. And what they do is right. We as Bible-believing Christians are right by the standard of the Bible. Call those things that the evil people are doing evil. And there's a third class. There are Christians out there who call that which is evil good because they like it and call that which is the Bible and another Christian is doing properly. They call it evil because they don't like it or they don't do it. Three aspects. There are wicked people who are doing wicked things, sinning, and they call that good and call that which is right in the Bible evil. It's okay for them to smoke. Whatever they smoke, it's okay. But to read your Bible, that's not okay. And yet the Bible says we're not to pollute our temple, which is, which is our bodies, the, the property of God, Making smoking a sin. And the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. And he tells us to read and study the Bible. And there are Christians who go out there and say, All right, your religion, your works, whatever you do cannot save you. Not of works leads any man boast. But that is the way of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only means that a man can be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. You are explaining to the, to the wicked man that his ways are evil and God's way is true. And then you've got Christians out there who are calling what they do, what their sins, good well you know i'm not uh, wednesday night i'm not in church because you know we have our we have our ball game and yet hebrew says we're not to be forsaken the assembly of the saints well you go to you know i i, I my ball 
Well, see, you're calling the ball game when it's on church time. You're calling that evil. Going to church and the ball game is good. Well, I don't go out and witness. I don't want to serve. I, you know, I let my light shine. And when the Bible says, going all the world and preach the gospel, and you say, well, you're turning people away. You know, that's not how you're supposed to do it. Man, this evil good and good as evil has been messed up even amongst the Christian fields. Malachi 2.17 You have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet ye say, where, where have I wearied him, the Lord? When ye say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. And he that delighteth them, or where is the God of judgment? So one of the things they're saying is, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. That wearies God. And he's talking about the priest. That could be anybody saved or lost today. Spiritualize the verse. Darkly, it's the priest of God. They were having the nerve like, pastors and pastorates and rabbis and, and, and whatever you want to call your spiritual lead of your religion or, or whatever you have, they're going out there saying, well, what they're doing, I can imagine of all the people I've met over six years now, coming six years in July, the farmer's market, I guarantee there have been people going back to church and saying, you know, I heard this guy screaming and hollering. I was supposed that his daughter was trying to give us a little piece of paper. And his, when my wife was living, uh, she was trying to tell me about Jesus. What do you think about that, Pastor? Oh, I think they're fanatical. I, I, you know, there's just some people just, just go out, out to the extreme and all that. And you, you're doing fine. You just let your light shine and... And you just be a happy-go-lucky Christian and just love, 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 love. Well, you're denying the Bible, Pastor, Rabbi, whatever you are. And the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And yes, Jesus Christ preached on the streets. Yeah, the disciples preached everywhere. When you allow members of your congregation to be involved in fornication or adultery, and you overlook it. You are calling evil good and that wearies the Lord. Oh, I know you put fancy new names on it. Shacking up, having an affair. It's love. It wearies the Lord. So an outright, outright lie is spoken on the behalf of God. When God says don't do it. And the members of the clergy, if I can say, say, go ahead and do it. I mean, come to our church, repent in our closet, and, and we'll give you all abstinence to go further sin until you come back next week. That's what Martin Luther hated about the Catholic Church, wanting to think. I can go ahead and go and sin, I'll just pay some money. They are saying that men and women that do evil in the eyes of God are good. When the Bible says not to do it, and the members of the clergy say do it, or the members of the pastors, or the members of the priests, the members of the rabbi, the, uh, the fathers, the brothers, whatever they call themselves, go ahead and do it. God the Father values the rendering of evil goods and evil deeds as evil. And when you turn around and call it evil good, that is a lie. This lie in the 21st century in the modern churches, God hates the sin but loves the sinner, is an outright lie. Yes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Explain to me then why God will take that rejecting 
sinner and cast him off in the lake of fire that burns forever, where John said, He that has not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Where is the love of God? As you will hear Jesus one day tell you, Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Man, all these cliches and all these sayings and the stuff you can buy in, in the hobby stores and buy at the dollar stores and buy in the grocery store. These little things, we put them on the thing, we put them on the wall. I wish they'd just burn in a hell of fire. But one thing you should have on your walls, and the Bible says in, in the law, the scripture. And none of that other nonsense. That God approves of sodomites. He doesn't. Calls it abomination. And churches are in love with the sodomite. And God loves us too. You're a liar. And divorce. Listen, there are biblical forms of divorce. Okay? There are no biblical occasions of sodomy. I have been rejected by churches by a biblical form that Jesus said that that divorce, not me, person I married, that divorce was scripturally bound by Jesus' own words. Adultery is allowed and hidden in the churches today. Sexual lust. Uh, the, these signs that have a church. We'll welcome all. Come as you are. What if you're a pedophile? All are welcome. Really? What if you're an adulterer? What if you come walking in the church? All are welcome with your adulteress. The sin that God disapproved is made rampant in the churches today. The evil is when God calls it sin, the sinners call the sin good. No, not to be so. Lord willing, next Thursday, look at topic number five. Okay, page 13 of 54 pages. Good versus evil. That'll be our next subject. And let's see how many we have right there. Okay. Well, we got quite a few of them. Oh boy, we got acquired a few of them. Good versus evil. We have we have a lot of them. We have thirty-two. That'll be stretched over about six weeks. So, Lord willing, next next Thursday.